Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about all of the books that I read in August. So I haven't been doing wrap-ups much this year. The only things you guys have seen from me are like some reading vlogs. I did a tier ranking of all the books that I've read so far this year. And I figured that because I did do that tier ranking that this would be the perfect opportunity to try to incorporate wrap-ups back into my channel. So I did read a total of 14 books. Not gonna lie, most of them were rereads because who am I if not a chronic rereader? But let's just get started. The first book that I read was actually a picture book and it is We're All Wonders by RJ Palacio. This is a picture book for Wonder by RJ Palacio, which is my favorite book of all time. All of my copies are right up there. And one of my very best friends, Julia, gifted me this for my birthday and I am just obsessed with it. It is adorable and it was just a really cute picture book. It's got some really cute illustrations in here like this one. Are you kidding me? The colors in this are absolutely stunning. And then we have ones like this. It wasn't adapting the book wonder into a picture book. It was kind of just taking all of the messaging from that book and then a little like introduction to who Augie is kind of and that's basically what this is. So while I kind of wish we got an adaptation of wonder because that would have been really cool, this was still really really fun in its own right. But now that I think about it, it would be really really fun to have a graphic novel for wonder how cute would that be? I'm just obsessed and I will take any content from Wonder that I can get honestly. So the next book I read was City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare. This is the fifth book in the Mortal Instruments series. I'm currently in the middle of rereading this series as a part of the Shadowhunter read-along that is being hosted by Lisa, Darian, and Casey. I will link all their channels down below for you guys to go check out. But this was July's book but I did not get around to it until August. And I have to say, I think it's one of my favorites in the whole Mortal Instruments series. If my memory serves correctly, City of Heavenly Fire, which is the last book, is actually my favorite. But out of the ones that I've reread thus far, I think this one is definitely like up there. But this book was a lot of fun. I like the villain in the second half of the series, Sebastian, way more than the one from the first half of the series, Valentine. I just find him more compelling and more like believable, I guess. There were some great Simon and Isabel moments in this book and they are one of my favorite couples in the entirety of the Shadowhunter Chronicles. So it was kind of really fun to see them interacting in this book, especially considering the events of the previous book where they weren't really, you know, getting along or anything because Simon was being a butthead. But yeah, this is kind of where the series starts to get a little bit better. But upon rereading this series, I think I've come to the conclusion that it's not my favorite series in the Shadowhunter Chronicles, which goes against everything that I've believed for the last handful of years because I think I've always thought that this was one of my favorite series. And I just don't think that it is. I think every series is better than this one, except maybe for the Eldest Curses, but I'm not really including that. But I do love the characters in this series a lot, obviously, and there's a lot going on in this book. So overall, it was a really fun reading experience. I do love rereading these books, even though they can be like kind of cheesy and there's a lot of weird things going on in them, but it was still a really fun time. And I'm really glad that I'm following along with this read along and getting to reread these books because I've never actually reread this series in particular. So it's been a really fun time. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. One of the main reasons why I wanted to film this video was because I wanted to talk about this next series, but that is the Heartstopper graphic novel series by Alice Oseman. So it consists of four volumes. They're very heavy and hard to hold up, but we have volume one, which I actually have read before. I read the UK edition maybe back in 2018. It's been a very long time, maybe 2019. I honestly don't know, but I knew that I wanted to reread this one because I honestly didn't remember a whole lot. I did watch the TV show when it came out, but I couldn't remember what was from the first volume, what might have been from the other volumes that I hadn't read, or what was just added to the TV show. So rereading this was a lot of fun and being able to re-experience it all and I think I had a much deeper appreciation for this book going into it for a second time because of my love for the TV show and then obviously there's the second volume and I actually think this is my favorite in the series thus far. I believe we're still getting one more volume coming out next year possibly I think but this one was my favorite so the show follows these first two volumes which I actually did not know and I kind of wish I did know that because maybe I would have wanted to read these before the show but whatever. So this one had a lot of my favorite moments from the TV show in it so it was really fun to see kind of where they came from in the graphic novel and I think I honestly just had the most fun reading the second volume because it did remind me of the TV show and honestly that show is one of the best adaptations that I've seen in a very very long time. It was just done so perfectly. The cast is perfect. Joe Locke as Charlie 
is perfection. Oh, it was just done so, so well. So yeah, I think this one's definitely my favorite in the series. And then we have volume three, which I also really, really enjoyed this one. And I could be wrong, but I think this is a lot of people's favorites in the series. They go on a class trip to Paris, which is a lot of fun. And this one also delves a bit deeper into some mental health issues, eating disorders, so trigger warnings for all of that. I believe there's also mentions of self-harm either in this one or the next one, or maybe both of them. I have a really bad memory, so I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure there's mentions of self-harm as well. So it does deal with heavier topics, which I really enjoyed, but overall this series is still just like a fun, light-hearted, good time. They're just really fluffy good reads but I do love the way that it does tackle harder topics and I just really enjoy the way Alice Oseman kind of weaved all the different elements together. We got to see more characters in this one that we get to meet in the show. They just kind of had a more prevalent part in this one. And then we get to the fourth one which I also still really really loved but it is my least favorite I think in the series thus far. This one deals very heavily with mental health and eating disorders so again trigger warnings for that. So this one's primarily told in like journal entries where Charlie and Nick are kind of just like recounting their lives and what's been going on recently in their journals which I did enjoy but I kind of would have preferred to actually see those things happening than have it being like retold to me but I think that's my only complaint with this fourth volume beyond that it still had some cute moments in it again I liked how it dealt with the harder topics but did it in a way that wasn't like super depressing if you know what I mean like it didn't weigh down the enjoyment or the cuteness of the series it was just like a really nice added addition and gave it a lot of depth that I really appreciated so I absolutely adored reading this graphic novel series in August and I can definitely see myself rereading it frequently like if you just need a little serotonin boost you know, pick these books up and I think that's what I'm gonna be doing when I'm feeling down. We'll also be rereading them before the next season comes out of the show and we'll be rereading them before the last volume comes out. I can just see this becoming a very, very reread graphic novel series for me. Just really well loved and I'm really happy that I finally got around to reading all of these. The next book I actually listened to as an audiobook and it's Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. I read the first book earlier on in the year at some point and I did really enjoy it. It's like a favorite or anything but after reading it I did decide that I wanted to continue on to the next book so Kingdom of the Cursed. I'm not gonna lie I was a bit lost at the beginning of this audiobook because like I said I did read the first book like months ago and I don't remember a whole lot about it. I honestly don't remember anything about how that book ended and so I was I was really lost going into the beginning of this book and I was also like working on my bullet journal spreads so I think I just wasn't fully paying attention at the very beginning. But I also feel like it jumps right into the plot like immediately into the story so I felt like it was a bit hard for me to follow at the beginning, but that's a me problem. I did eventually though get into the groove of the story once I kind of re-familiarized myself with the characters and the world and I kind of fell into it a little bit more. So my favorite part about this book and honestly the series as a whole so far are the two main characters. We have Amelia and Wrath, I believe. Sometimes when I listen to audiobooks, I can't remember character names very well, but I'm pretty sure it's Amelia and I know that it's Wrath. I really like them and I like their dynamics with each other. It's very interesting to read about. He's like a prince of hell and she's like a witch, maybe? Maybe, I think so. Again, memory is so shit, but I believe those are their roles and I really enjoy their like relations with each other and kind of seeing their dynamics play out especially in this book it was a lot of fun although I do feel like the entire plot of this second book could just be boiled down to them trying not to have sex with each other. I don't want to say too much because it will give things away for like the first book and kind of the entire plot of the second book but I feel like the entire book was just them try not to have sex with each other and that's just kind of all that was happening. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it, I'm just saying there wasn't much else going on, you know? <laughs> So this isn't like a favorite series of all time for me. I think there are definitely other series that I enjoy more than this one, but it's still a fun time. I wasn't sure while reading the second book if I wanted to continue on with the last book, but at this point I think I might as well. The audiobooks are a lot of fun. I think they might be narrated by the same person who did her other series, Stalking Jack the Ripper. I think the voice sounded the same to me and I do enjoy her narration style. I think it fits Karen Maniscalco's books very, very well. So I will consider listening to the next one when it comes out. Whenever my library app gets a hold of it, I don't even know when it's coming out. I know that it's this year, I just don't know when, but I will 
eventually be finishing up this series, which I guess I'm excited for. I am kind of intrigued to know how it all wraps up. Okay, so then I reread a favorite duology of mine because I watched the show Lock and Key and became obsessed with it. And so I really wanted like the same kind of vibes, but in book form. So naturally I went with The Dark Vault by Victoria Schwab. This consists of the archived and the unbound. And this deals heavily with keys, just like Lock and Key. And so I figured this was the perfect one to jump into. I was also in a low-key V.E. Schwab mood, so it just felt like perfect timing. This series are some of my favorite books by V.E. Schwab. I enjoy them literally so much. I was also annotating the series, which I've done before, but I did it way more extensively this time. I just found new things to appreciate, new things to highlight, new things to comment on, and it was just such an enjoyable experience. Like, let me tell you, it was just so much fun to reread, and I feel like I just love this series so much. I feel like my love for it grows more every single time that I read it. I also listened to Lock and Key's soundtrack from season three the entire time while reading both of these books. Let me tell you, it was a vibe. I highly enjoyed myself. But yeah, I just, I love these characters so much. Wesley and Mac are my babies. I also really enjoy the world in this book. I find the whole concept of the archived so interesting. The back of the book says, imagine a place where the dead rest on shelves like books. And if that's not enough to intrigue you, I don't know what will. I feel like these are some of V.E. Schwab's most underrated books. And I feel like because they are some of her earlier works, like I believe these are her second and third books ever published. So I feel like people just don't enjoy them as much because they don't quite hold up to the other books that she's written or people just don't give it a chance. Like I feel like nobody talks about this series anymore and it makes me so sad because I absolutely adore it. And it was the first V.E. Schwab book I ever read, so maybe that has something to do with it. Like this in comparison to her other books are very like kind of simplistic and not as poetic and you know whatever but I really really enjoyed it and I do still think there are a lot of amazing quotes in here. You can definitely see how good her writing is and I can definitely like looking back on it see how it progresses so much more beyond this series but I really adore this series. I think it's a lot of fun. It also deals with some hard topics in it. I do believe there are also mentions of self-harm in this book. Look, no one's actually properly self-harming in this book, but the main character's mom and kind of, I think her therapist, like her mom's therapist, believe that maybe our main character is harming herself, but in fact she is not. There are some sinister things at play instead, but just if that's something you're sensitive to, they do talk about it and kind of the scene leading up to that. I think it is talked about in a little bit of detail, like what's actually going on, so just letting you know. But I absolutely adore this series. It is top tier for me. It's such a good time whenever I decide to reread it. Okay, so the next book I read was Beach Read by Emily Henry. This was another the reread it for me and I tabbed it up even more than I did the first time. It is wild how many tabs are in this book. This is one of my favorite romance books of all time but this book I have not read since 2020 when it came out and so rereading it was such a fun experience just you know really reminding me of all the little reasons why I love it. You know it really comes down to how much I love the characters and their relationship with each other, their chemistry, their dynamic is top tier. But also I can relate to different things from both of them, which I really, really appreciate. I find that I can always relate to Emily Henry characters no matter what they're going through, even if what I'm going through or what I have gone through is different than what her characters are going through. I can still relate to them in some capacity. Also the main characters in this book are writers and I feel like I've gone through a lot since last reading this book in terms of my writing. So I'm able to relate to them a lot more than I could previously and I just really, really enjoy that. Overall, this was just a really, really fun time. I absolutely adore it and I'm really glad that I was able to finally reread it this year because I think I wanted to reread it last year and I just never got around to it. So I'm really happy that I managed to finally get around to rereading this one. The next two books I don't want to spend too much time talking about, but I reread the final books in the Bloodline series. In my recent tier ranking video, I did talk about the first four books in this series that I reread in July. So I just finished rereading the the series this month. So we have Silver Shadows and the Ruby Circle. So Bloodlines is the spin-off series to Vampire Academy, which is another one of my favorite series. But this one is just so much fun. We follow Adrian, who is a pretty big character.
character in the Vampire Academy series, but he really becomes a main character in this one, and it just makes me so happy. And we have Sydney, who's also quite a big character in some of the Vampire Academy books, kind of like in the middle to the end of the series. And it's just so much fun to see them paired up in this book. They are one of my favorite couples of all time. Did not mean to drop the book like that. I always try to pick a favorite book in this series and I can never seem to do it successfully. Like I feel like it's either the third book, The Indigo Spell, or the fourth book, The Fiery Heart, or the fifth book, Silver Shadows. I can never pick between those three, but I do love them all to pieces. They're just such a fun time. So if you love Vampire Academy and you have not yet read this spin-off series, what are you doing? It is literally so, so good. Like, I think sometimes I even like this series more than Vampire Academy. I don't know how true that actually is, but sometimes I do feel like it's true. <laughs> or if you have not read either of the series, what are you doing? They are just so much fun, so good. The romance in these books in particular are just literally so good. I have no words for the romance in this series. It is absolutely phenomenal. The next book I read I really really loved and it's Cafe Con Lychee by Emery Lee. This is Emery Lee's sophomore novel I believe and I got an arc for it from HCC Frenzy back in May when I finally got around to reading it. I honestly loved the characters in this book so so much. They were so cute but they felt really real to me like really messy and flawed and it was just so enjoyable to read about. And the plot in this book was so much fun and it felt really fast paced and enjoyable like I read this entire book in a sitting I mean granted I was on a road trip so I couldn't really do anything else but I still read it in a sitting it was fun and enjoyable and it went by really quickly like it didn't even feel like I was sitting there for very long reading it before it was over but like I said the plot of this book is just so much fun it deals with our two main characters Theo and Gabby they are the children of these two like rivaling family cafes and they kind of had to team up together in this book to save their respective cafes and it's just so much fun the way that they have to team up together and work together. I found the writing style to be enjoyable and easy to read so if you have not yet picked up this book I highly recommend you do so. Okay the last book that I read in the month of August was actually another reread told you there were a lot of rereads. It is The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. This is the first book in the Percy Jackson series. I read this book a couple of times, I think, but it's not my favorite series. So why have I reread it so many times? Could not tell you. I do love the characters in this series though, and it is like a lot of fun. It's just, you know, an easy middle grade read. But I decided to reread it because of all the excitement surrounding the new TV show coming to Disney+. Plus. Just all the talk about it on Twitter got me really excited for some reason. When I will be watching the TV show because maybe I will like it more. I don't know. So I really felt like rereading the book. And so I got the audiobook for it and I listened to it. It was a super quick listen and it was just, you know, it was a fun time. I don't think I'm gonna immediately jump in to the rest of the books. Like, I think reading this first book, you know, satisfied that Percy Jackson itch that was going on in my brain. But yeah, those were all the books that I read in the month of August. Lots of rereading, a new favorite series, and I don't know, it was just a really great reading month. I think it's actually the best reading month in terms of volume, like how much I read all year, so that's really exciting. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know what you guys have read recently because I'd really love to know. Subscribe if you have not yet already, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!